How's it going, everybody? Today we are looking at the Anytone D890UV. This is a prototype radio. This was sent to me to review. You can see that obviously we got a nice blue case, a bit different than uh, you expect with the other Anytones. Now, this is an interesting radio to track down because uh, it was announced, but then it, it kind of disappeared for a couple of years and we didn't see anything about it. I did find it recently and I confirmed that, yes, uh, it is coming out. You'll see they'll start shipping in January 2026, listed for a price of $299, which puts it above the, the medium-ish range of handhelds. This is getting into the more expensive ones, but this is a full featured DMR radio with a lot of interesting features. Uh, by the way, I'll give you a, a quick notice on how to pre-order this. At least I think this is how this works. When you scroll down a little bit uh, right here on the website, see those check marks? If you don't want the mobile radio, you can just unbundle it, and then that should let you add it to the cart. I think it will. Uh, oh, maybe not because it's not in stock yet, but I am told they will have it. This does airband AM receive. It's a crossband repeater. True dual receive function, so it's two frequencies that you can monitor simultaneously. So you could be analog on one frequency and a DMR repeater on another frequency. We'll talk a little bit about it. The model I have has NXDN, so hypothetically that could be the other one that you're monitoring. I am told that that is kind of like a firmware unlock that will be coming in the future, so keep that in mind. It has GPS built in, so it'll do APRS. It has a larger battery. It's about 31 uh, yeah, 3,100 milliamp hours. Now, uh, receive it will receive beyond the 2 meter, 70 centimeter space, but primarily it is a 2 meter and 70 centimeter band radio for transmit and receive. It'll accept 4,000 channels, 10,000 talk groups, and 500,000 digital contacts. And if you didn't know, the digital contact just takes the DMR number and it replaces it with the call sign of the individual. You have to download that and load it on the radio. Some people use it, some people don't. This does have USB-C charging as well as it comes with a desk charger. So keep that in mind as well as some other goodies that come in the box. A very straightforward radio design philosophy at play here with multi-function buttons on the left, a little top button as well. But if you're familiar with any of the Anytone radios, then this is going to be no different. It is a good-looking radio, a little bit of a chonker, a little fat, but not bad at all. There's a scroll button on the top. This allows you to slide through channels when you're in a given zone. In this case, I have a zone called Cerritos, and I can scan through things like the Papa System DMR and uh, NXDN, which is a feature. I'll get this up right out of the way. This works with NXDN at least this prototype that I have, and I tested that it does work successfully. Note that when this is released, it should be any day from what I understand, that this radio may not have NXDN loaded. It will be a part of a firmware upgrade uh, for access. Hey, KJ, testing, one, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, you might have heard that, but literally we we're listening to the NXDN repeater that's in the area. So keep in mind, this will work with NXDN. I don't know when it will be unlocked or if it will come factory released out of the gate. Just to keep that in mind. It does work, and it sounds really blur. good. So uh, up to the wedding. But anyway, uh, I, I think so. But it, hey, it's working. And how, how do I sound coming through here? So I'm using that new uh, Anytone radio. Oh, you sound fantastic. That thing sounds great. Well, like most of my radio tests, I'm sitting in the massage chair doing the radio programming. So it must be that easy that I can maintain relaxation while programming DMR or NXDN in this case. So a uh, good test, I guess. Yes, indeed. That relaxation worked apparently, um, especially for DMR. NXDN is a lot easier. I mean, that's according to Chris. I haven't really uh, programmed NXDN in a long time, but DMR, yeah, I've programmed, programmed quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, this is Chris's repeater up on Santiago Peak. And uh, it's an MTR 3000 and um, he just got it back up and running. It it was it died. The old one died, and it, it took him a while to replace it. But he's got a new one up there now, and here it is. Is the audio quality much different versus DMR, or what's the general consensus? Because I, I understand this mode was made by ICOM and Kenwood for Land Mobile. So what's the what's the thought there? Do you know? Well, as you know, DMR is TDMA. You know, using two time slots and a 12 and 12 and a half kilohertz channel. Uh, NXDN is FDMA, however, it uses six and a quarter. So you're only using six and a quarter bandwidth on, on NXDN versus P25 and DMR and, uh, uh, 
I can't remember what other modes, but they're using 12 and a half. So that's, it's FDMA, but it's using six and a quarter uh, kilohertz bandwidth. Okay, well, I've learned a lot now. I have uh, more information on NXDN, so thank you, Shane. I appreciate it. I'll be you monitoring, but i got to get off and do the next uh, next amazing thing. So thanks for talking with me, man, KI6NAZ. I'll be monitoring. I'll be around since this is working. Might as well stick to it. Anyway, around the top of the radio, this top button, I have it set to the Digi Monitor slot, so this is on double slot. You can change it to off, and it has... Baofeng style connectors on the side so if you want to do a speaker do keep in mind that you have to have the smaller what is that a 1.2 millimeter connector tip ring sleeve so yeah all right as far as use case it's if you've never okay if you've never seen this radio then I, i'm going to show you it's exactly what you expect though if you are familiar with these anytone so if you're already familiar with them then you may want to skip ahead but Anyway, menu brings up a kind of a traditional view of a DMR radio. So this would be where you s select which talk group you're on, call logs for past, let's see, last call, last call list. Yeah, so all the people that I've been listening to and talking to on it. Uh, let's go back. Your zone that you're in, and again, there's a lot of zones in here, uh, but my local one is what I have right now selected. Zones are a way to organize the channels. Channels are usually repeater. You gotta change your mindset a little bit with DMR, and then a channel is basically a repeater. Scan button, roaming, settings, record function. So let's let's try the record. Uh, let's see, let's turn that on. And we have no record yet. So we're gonna let this sit and then we'll play that, an example of that while you wait. Do you have one of the calls in case you wanted to try in the yeah, uh, yes, actually, I don't have uh, only 74, 75 feet uh, from the uh, chimney uh, over to the ash tree, which is... There is a built-in GPS. I have shown that it works. Keep that in mind. It is used with this new satellite feature, which uses the GPS location to determine where you're at so that you can follow and track satellites and yes it will turn that off on you if you show uh if you click that off but with this you can track things like the iss uh, if you go here let's see we'll take a prediction and so yeah we got an iss pass coming up in a little bit and saudi sat as well which is so 50 i believe that is what it's referring to so make sure you go to set your location to i will not show that on the screen because then i'll just dox myself Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. A cool feature with the D890 here is if you go under tools, you can download GPS satellite data as well as ISS and some other things for making satellite contact. So we're going to go ahead and click that HTTP download button and let the progress finish, and then we'll upload it to the radio. It has Bluetooth, and there is an APRS setting. So go in here, and you can use it to send beacons and receive them as well if you have the channel for APRS programmed. Going out, though, on the list side, if you click that, that's where you can change your talk group. So I am working on the pop system primarily when I'm on DMR. Boy, howdy, do we have a lot of... There it is, pop a system, select contact, and there you go. Now, I did program this NXDN channel as well as the DMR channels, and I will briefly show what I did here. But again, for those of you that are familiar with this Anytone radio, then the programming software is going to look kind of exactly as you expect it to look. It's going to function pretty much the same as well. So maybe jump a, uh, jump a, a forward a little bit if you're familiar with this radio because it's going to be a lot of what you already know. And we need to take a detour for a second on this video to talk about DMR, right? This is a digital mode that you're going to find on a lot of repeaters. It works really well. There's a ton of repeater systems out there that support DMR, like here, the PAPA system here in Southern California. It is a huge group of repeaters that all work very well, and it's a, it's a huge repeater association with a large membership pool. 
I've found in my experience that finding a system like this is one of the best ways if you want to participate with DMR repeaters or get to know a, a group that owns a repeater or participate on the repeater donate to you know help the repeater owners out or become a member in a group like this and part of the reason for that is let me let me show you on their website these are all going to be different but if you go to repeaters and maps here let me show you what they're dealing with here they have a ton a ton of repeaters these are all the repeaters in the area and uh, you can see a, a lot of them I can see from my house it's it's usually best if you go through the process of finding a DMR repeater that's populated and people are talking is to get to know the people there and if they need a little help you know throw them a little scratch on the side or if it's a group you may want to consider joining them because this is almost like a club they have like monthly lunches they have different events they do stuff all the time and, and it's a really good backup network for communications as well so there you go pro tip so something to show you here just look how deep this repeater network is so here's here's all the analog uh, repeaters and I got to scroll off to the side here just to fit it all in but Santiago's bought I mean, a lot of these Signal Peak Santiago Palos Verdes Mount Wilson all of those are are right by me I can hit a ton of these but then go down here there's your DMR and there's a huge chunk of those as well Santiago's the one for me though so we're gonna make sure it's color code one because that's what it calls out and uh, that's the frequency set so let's go ahead and flip it over here I pulled up a new channel, so created a new channel, called it Papa 3, and added the receive frequency, which is what you see on the website. And then they have a minus after it, so I'm taking that as a offset low, which means you're about 5 megahertz down. So it's 441.820, and color code 1 is right there for transmit and receive. So that's all it should be. Now we got to go load the talk groups and set a receive channel. I guess we could probably skip that, but... Let's go ahead and do those talk groups. Since I am working with another individual on this radio, I figured it best to go ahead and add a second radio ID for myself for DMR. I also made sure that our talk groups were in place, which all the ones I care about are. So then I made a receive group call list specifically for the talk groups I care about, which is California Local, Papa Sis, and Local 1. And I created a zone for my area in Cerritos, which I've added down here. And we have just the Papa 3 channel on there. I can add more if I want to, but um, we'll just leave it at that for now. A feature that is often overlooked is this speaker. This is an incredibly loud radio, as well as being a very good battery life radio. One of the better ones in the arsenal when it comes to just everyday carry, if you are a DMR person, or now NXDN, once they uh, unlock it completely, you are really going to like this radio for just everyday carry purposes. It can be put in a dock, you can just wear it on you for multiple days without a full charge, and it is loud as all get out. It's probably one of the best features about it is how loud this radio is. Very, very strong in that sense. As far as quality of signal, it sounds really good, um, whether you're on analog, NXDN, and then DMR is probably going to be a little less quality. I did a Synad test on this radio, and the results are pretty good. We're running a Synad test against the Anytone. We're getting about negative 24 dB is where we're at. About 12 dB Synad. This is the audio coming in. For those that aren't familiar with what this test is, I'm generating an RF tone into the radio. And the speaker, or the speaker jack, is playing out into this port here. And we slowly reduce the signal until we get to about 12 dB Synad. And so radio to radio, if you compare them, you'll find that some radios have a slightly better amplitude than others. In this case, this is negative 24, negative 124, which is good. Um, I've seen handhelds that go from negative 18 up to negative 24, so this would kind of be on the higher end. They're all within the same uh, general range though, and so this just denotes that, yep, it's a, it's, a, it's a tuned receiver. It sounds good, it's gonna be where it should be. And of course, while I got the service monitor out, I also did a power test as well. For a power test, fully charged radio and turbo, 7.5 watts around there. Hit the power button on the side here to high, 5.46, medium, 2.6 about and then let's go to low Ooh, under a watt hey that's pretty cool that's actually kind of cool you could use this for 
Operating a hotspot, for instance, it'd be perfect power level for hotspot use. Great. Now, some interesting menu settings that you will have to get used to. Your primary DMR menu is going to be on the top here, but if you scroll down to settings, that's where you can change things in within the radio and the device, etc. Under radio set specifically, this is where you're going to go down to other functions. Now, within other other functions, this is where you get auto power off, that kind of thing. But some handy features that you will need to know about is analog squelch level. If you are on an analog channel at the time, you can change this to whatever squelch level you want, which is a little bit buried to find, so keep that in mind. And then if you want to do air, AM, FM, you need to go in and turn it on or off. And in this case, uh, let's set it to B. So it is now in air mode, and you can see it's already, the squelch has dropped there. Maybe you're hearing that on the mic, but let's back out. Now, a function of using this radio, if you hit the P1, P2 button, this allows you to get back out of whatever you're in. So NXDN Cerritos is my digital path or my digital side, my digital channel. And then you have a VFOA, and then you're like, okay, there's, there's Papa 3 again in Cerritos. Well, how do I get back to uh, the VFO for the airband? Well, you hit P1, and now you're back into it. Now, I was frankly shook when I turned on airband. This is connected to a disco antenna I have on my roof, which is a wideband, higher frequency receive antenna. I cannot tell you how good the audio quality is on this. This is a fantastic airband receiver and I'm again I'm giving it a decent antenna prepare yourself for this and I'm going to use a good quality audio recorder to actually pick this up because it is astronomically good. Full to tower formation Zulu 2147 Zulu wind variable at 4 visibility 10 sky clear temperature 21 2.04 altimeter 29 or 9 or 8 you're off approach in use arriving the party runway 24 notams runway 24 runway in to identify life out of service Advise your mission has this weather information available on flight service frequencies. Advise on initial contact. I am not ridiculously close to this airport, but this is, aside from having an airband receiver specifically, or a general coverage receiver, one of the best airband receivers I have heard. The only close second to this is the airband receive that I would get off of the Yesu FT60. And if you've ever used that radio, you know that is a very good airband receiver as well. And this is very surprisingly good. I'm very impressed by that. This is the ground frequency, which I sometimes can't copy this. We're on a 7 Yankee Yankee frequency change. Wow. It's very good. Cool. Echo at 24, run up, taxi, four, two, four. Echo, on ground, runway 24, taxi via alpha. Alpha, Now all signs are pointing that this radio will be announced by the end of the year, 2025. I have no reason to see this being held off any longer. This is, as far as I'm concerned, a very good DMR radio, possibly one of the best ones that you could get your hands on these days if you're not talking about going Motorola or, you know, a various other type of radio of that ilk. Uh, I really, really like this radio. I am not a huge DMR aficionado, though, so, you know, take that for what it's worth. I will post links to this when I have a link to give you, but I am told, I, I promise, it's, it's coming out really, really soon. So there you go. That's a bit of a look at uh, some of the features on this D890 UV from Anytone. 73, everybody. See ya.